Welcome everybody, this is day number seven. Thanks for tuning in. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the bodies, components and assemblies. So wait, don't leave. I know this is probably not the most exciting topic, but when I was doing my research, it seemed like many of you do not understand these basics, even if they are very, very important. Actually, it took me some time to understand these concepts too. And because it's usually a good idea to know the rules before you break them, I'm gonna show you what I have learned in the next two videos. Now, let's get my face out of the camera and jump right into it. Now, before I start, I want to point out that we have to differentiate between two different design environments in Fusion 360. And the first one is the one where the timeline or the parametric history is enabled. So that's always the case when you start a new document or a new drawing in Fusion 360. And the second mode is the one where the timeline is disabled. So that's the direct modeling or the direct editing mode. And you can uh, disable the timeline if you go to the right hand bottom corner click on the icon here and select do not capture design history so for now only keep in mind that i'm working on a default environment with the design history on and i'm mentioning this because everything that i'm gonna show you in the next 10 minutes behaves a little bit different depending on what kind of environment you are in now, what are components? When you start a new design in Fusion 360, you do not have to create a component first because you already start designing in a predefined component. And this one is called the default or the top level component. It's the first item in the browser list. And whenever you see a gray white box like I have it here, it means that you are dealing with a component. And this one is currently active because the radio button on the right is checked. The Top level component also already contains uh, three folders with different elements. The first and the second folder are characteristic for the top level components and the origin folder can be found in any additional component you create. So when I click on the units, I can change the unit type to something else in centimeters, for instance. In the named views folder, I have a couple of predefined uh, views and in the origin folder when I show this one I have an origin point I have three axes and three different planes now so far so good I can start designing immediately and I do this by go to the create down to box um, choose the top plane draw the base of my box give it some height like so and then I also hide the folder with the origin elements again. And at the same time, I have a new folder in my browser structure. And this one contains the box as a solid body. The term body can be a little bit confusing because you do not have to create solids to have bodies inside the body folder. It can be uh, an open surface too, for instance. So if I switch to the top plane, press L on the keyboard, like so, and then I draw a couple of lines, exit the sketch mode, and give these lines some height by extruding them, like so. Then the bodies folder gets extended by a second body, and this time, it's an open surface. So it doesn't have to be a solid to be classified as a body. If you want to know more about the difference between solids, surfaces, T-spline and freeform objects and meshes, then go and watch the video of day number four. I'm gonna link this one in the right hand upper corner. Now, let me start all over again by creating a new document. I hit Control N on the keyboard. Then I create a new sketch on the top plane. I hit C to select the circle tool, draw a circle on top of the origin, exit the sketch mode and extrude the circle like so. Next, I select the top of the cylinder, hit the C key again to enter the sketch mode and draw another circle on top. And then I also extrude this one. And before I click on OK in the extrude dialog box, I make sure that the operation is set to join. And when I do so, and when you look over in the browser, I can find one solid body in the bodies folder. 
Below the bodies folder, you will find a sketches folder. And this one contains the two sketches that I was using to create this part. So the first one was the one that I was drawing on the top plane. And the second one was the circle that I was drawing on the top plane of the cylinder. And this one was responsible for the head of our screw or our bolt. I have created this part again directly in the top level or the default component. And this is perfectly fine as long as you are now done with the drawing. So this is a very simple part that can be reused as instances in another scene. And as long as it remains one body in one component and you are done designing, then this approach is perfectly fine. Now let's say that this is going to be the scene that contains my complex design consisting of several different parts. And under these circumstances, I've already started designing the wrong way and I've broken rule number one. And rule number one was defined in a Fusion 360 forum and it basically tells that whenever a scene consists of multiple parts, you have to create components first and then start designing your parts inside these components. So let me briefly show you what I mean by this. First of all, don't get me wrong, it is perfectly legit to have multiple bodies in one component, even if it is the top level or the default component. But if you design this way, you will miss many of the functions and features that come with components. So for instance, I could continue to design here by going down to create, choose the box primitive, select the top plane, draw a box like so, give it some thickness, let's say 0.5 is enough, select the top plane, start another sketch, draw a circle around here, then I'm gonna select this circle, copy paste it over to the other edge, click on OK, exit the sketch, and then I'm gonna select both circles again and perforate the plate, like so. And when you look at the browser, we have now two bodies in the body folder, and this is perfectly fine. It is important for you to understand that even if we are dealing here with two separated elements, so their surfaces aren't touching each other, we do not deal with separate components or separate parts. And this is because both bodies here are part of one top level component and they also share the same design or the same parametric history. From a technical point of view, this gets handled as one object. And this also means that I can not use any of the joint or drive joints or motion study commands that you can find in the assembly dropdown. Now, you are probably wondering, Ben, what is the correct way to build these parts? And I'm gonna show you this next by creating a new document. I hit Control N on the keyboard. And before I start creating my parts, I go to assembly and click on new component. And I'm gonna name this one my bolt component. And I click on OK. And then I go to the assembly dropdown again, or you can also go to the top level component here, right click and select new component. And then I'm gonna name this one plate. And I end up with two components inside my top level or default component. And at the same time, you have probably already noticed that the icon has changed. I previously had here a single box, like I have it now at these two components. And this icon here tells me that I'm dealing with an assembly now that consists of several different components. And now you can activate the bolt component by clicking on the radio button. And then I go to create, select a cylinder this time and uh, the top plane and place the cylinder on the origin like so, add some height and repeat the same process on top of the cylinder by selecting the top face, go to create again, cylinder and draw another cylinder on top like we have done before. And as you can see now, this body sits inside the bolt component. 
Next, let's create the plate again real quick. And I do this by going to the plate component. I activate this one. And when I do so, all of the other components are grayed out and I can only focus on the currently selected component. And here I start a new sketch on the top plane. I draw a rectangle like so. Exit the sketch, give it some thickness, 0.5 is okay. Then I select the top face again, enter the sketch mode, draw a circle like so. And then I copy paste the circle over to the other side. Exit the sketch mode again, select both circles and perforate the plate like so. Now, when I switch back to the top level component, which is an assembly now and activate this one so that all of my components are active again, then some of you might say that this scene does not look that different than the one that I was creating before. But fact is that both scenes are quite different now. And it becomes obvious when we take a look at the timeline first. As long as I'm in the top level assembly here, the timeline down here looks pretty standard. I was starting with two components followed by two cylinders and the sketch for our plate and so on and so forth. But when I switch to the single components, you can see that each of them has its own timeline, right? And this is great because it allows you to work in a much more organized manner. And when I switch back to the previous version here, it is obviously not the case. When I perform additional adjustments, the timeline becomes longer and longer because I'm dealing with bodies inside a component and not different components. Another characteristic is that I can move the components around in the assembly without using the move tool or move command. So if I activate the top level assembly again, I can simply click on a component and move it around in the scene. And this is possible because each of my components come with its own coordinate system that is located in the origin folder here and here. And when I do so, also two new icons become available in the toolbar and that's the capture position and revert position icon. And they both do exactly what their name implies. So if I click on revert, the um, position of my components get set back to their original state and if I click on capture position a new capture position icon gets appended to the timeline of the top level assembly. I can now also use some of the tools that are available in the assembly drop down like the enable all contact and when I now move the components around they um, interact with each other so one component affects the position of the other component like so and let me quickly revert the position again and deactivate contact all. Of course you can also move bodies around inside a component so let me briefly switch back to the previous scene and this is the one where I have the bolt and the plate as separate bodies inside the default component and here you cannot simply select uh, one of these parts and move them around you have to select all of the uh, faces or the entire body, then hit the M key on the keyboard to bring up the move and copy command. And now we can move it around and replace it in the scene like so. And when you are done and click on OK, a new move and copy icon gets appended to the timeline. Now, before I move on to part two of this topic, let me briefly recap what we have learned in today's video. It is important to note that in Fusion 360, you are dealing with three different elements with bodies, with components, and with assemblies. And the body can be anything. It can be a solid piece of geometry. It can be uh, a surface model. It can be a free form or a T-spline object. And it also can be a mesh. And the component is basically the container for the bodies and the sketches. And whenever you are dealing with a scene that consists of more than one component, you are dealing with an assembly. Now that's it for part one. Thank you very much for watching. In the next one, I will show you how to copy components, how to create instances. I will talk about XRefs and I will show you how to copy bodies inside components. So see you in the next one.